at the very bottom of the south, Europe seems to be at the end, not only geographically. If there were a scrapping bonus for seaside resorts, Castel Volturno would be first. Until the 90s, the wealthy citizens of Naples spent their holidays here. But La Olce Vita is over. Today this beach is called Beirut. You can well imagine how people celebrated here and had a nice meal. But what has become of it in less than 20 years? The ruins of a modern society. The sea has taken back what should never have been here anyway. Because the holiday residences with the unobstructable sea view were built illegally. On a foundation of fraud, corruption and unscrupulousness. The structural sins of an uncontrolled society. It was like the Wild West. Whoever arrived here and found a free space could occupy it and just start building. The authorities didn't just turn a blind eye, they turned a blind eye to both of them. The old house owners left Castel Volturno long ago, but now the new inhabitants have arrived. Refugees, mainly from Black Africa. 20,000 live here side by side with 25,000 Italians. A problematic relationship. Several migrants have moved into this empty residential and commercial building. Stephen came from Libya years ago. He reached Europe by boat and only made it to Castel Volturno. Without a valid residence status, this is the last stop of his escape. We are here in an abandoned house where we immigrants lived. We can't get work, but we're trying to get valid documents. We have no home. We all live in this room. Heating and sanitary facilities no longer exist. The inhabitants have organized their own water supply. The balcony is now the bathroom. This is where you get the water. Everyone has their own soap. And then you go in here. This is to close the door. And I always use this for watering. Most of the young men from Africa want only one thing, to leave. Because here we have no job, we are not working, we are just wasting our time. Yeah, that's why all of us, we are fighting for the document to leave, to go and find maybe where we could get a better life. Yeah. Which country would you prefer? Only God knows, because as we are coming, we know that maybe when we arrive here, here will be better for us, and here also is in the fire. It is not only the migrants who are overtaxing Italy. It's the mistakes of the last decades. Mountains of rubbish that no one in politics can get a grip on. Mafia crimes that nobody can stop. Shootings that leave more and more innocent victims. And pompous funerals that cement the power of the godfathers. It's more of a Camorra now, with a tendency towards terrorism. The influx of tens of thousands of refugees has left the Republic in a state of insecurity for right-wing populists and Eurosceptics. Either Europe changes itself or the people change Europe. Even if a comedian's party is in government, it's getting serious. Almost 40 years ago, the victims of an earthquake were accommodated in Castel Volturno. Today it is the victims of a gigantic movement of refugees who are quartered here themselves. A city in disintegration. Antonio Scalzone has been mayor here twice. Formerly for Berlusconi's party. He didn't solve the problems then. Now he wants to try again. This time for the right-wing populist, Liga. I have nothing against the blacks. They are like us. We're actually all the same, but they just don't fit into our Neapolitan life. Not only here, in other cities too. All that rubbish. 
and then they don't pay for electricity. Look at this garbage. The man in the fine twine makes up his own mind. In front of the house, across the street, told inventory, is piling up. The illegal resident has just left. Was the woman a friend of yours? No, she's just a country girl. That's all I know. Why are all these mattresses and stuff lying around here? How come? I don't know that. Many people work clearing out cellars or garages. That's what they get paid for. But then they don't dispose of the junk legally. That would cost money, so they take it with them and dump it somewhere. Anywhere that suits them. For the remaining Italians, the situation seems unbearable. It's not worth living here anymore. The other day, when was that? Yes, Sunday, we had a discussion with the blacks. They, excuse me if I say it so directly, peed in our front yard. While we were sitting up on the balcony. That's unbelievable. And when I asked them, all they said was, shut up. Don't film, don't film. Yes, film them. Villaggio Coppola is the largest district in Castel Volturno and the third largest illegally built residential complex in the world. The dilapidated concrete castles were supposed to be demolished long ago. And yet, people still live here. One is Patty. She's from Nigeria. She occupied the vacant apartment. This is where I live. In this room are things I sell or bought. This is my living room. Up there the water always runs down when it rains. Patty came to Italy when she was 15. A so-called madam promised her a job as a hairdresser. But things turned out differently. After two days I asked when I can start working at the hairdresser, I want to work and meet him. Then she said, what hairdresser? You will work here as a prostitute, as a whore. I thought mamma mia, I don't want that. I said I want to go back to my country, back home. She said, no. And then she threatened me with the Nigerian mafia and I got scared. Patty has lost more than just her dream of Europe. That's my story. It's horrible. But it's my experience. I have to be brave so I can move on. Meanwhile, she runs a private purchase and sale business. Today it is her Italian neighbor who exchanges shoes for cigarettes. My shoes don't fit me. I'm a size 40 and they're 37. Thank you, thank you. Shops on the verge of subsistence. Everybody has to make their living around here. Locals and newcomers. Very good, ciao. Because more and more borders are closed, there are only a few ways into Europe. For months, a decisive battle has been raging on the water between those who help and those who want to close themselves off. At the beginning of April, the German ship Allan Kurdi drifts seamlessly through the Mediterranean. Italy and Malta have closed their ports. When we enter the boat, there are 62 refugees on board, in addition to the crew. Most of them come from Nigeria, have overcome thousands of kilometers of flight, survived the chaos in the coastal state of Libya, only to be stopped just before the long for destination. Their place of longing, Europe, reacts to them with cold rejection. We don't believe that Italy can just abandon us here for a week now. We are suffering here. We don't believe. Over Malta, they, they, they should at least take us, let us land first before they will say anything. 
just kept us here a week. For we are humans like them. We use blood flow in our vein like them. Italy has been left alone by Europe in the migration crisis. The crew and their German captain are the last rescuers who are still off the coast of Libya. For him, this mission is about defending human rights, even from politics. We rescue, and then it is, it must be so, that the rescued are taken into safe custody as quickly as possible into a safe haven. In other words, a safe haven where their human rights are respected, where they are not enslaved, where they are not tortured, and so on. When they discovered the refugees seven days earlier, they were stuck in a rubber dinghy. Men, women, and children, exhausted and crowded together in a few square meters. It takes time for them all to cross over. An operation which, from the point of view of Italian justice, is comparable to the business of trafficking gangs. You can't call humanitarian aid more cynical. One week after the rescue, the Alan Curdy approaches a ship with supporters. The crew belongs to an Italian aid organization, Bella Italia at Sea. We're getting food, medicine. We are also getting water and some journalists have come on board to take pictures and report on the situation on board. Media attention for people in greatest distress. Thank you, thank you. Diplomatic negotiations are already underway at this time. A tough struggle for the opening of the European fortress walls. It is as if an ambulance is not allowed to drive to the scene of an accident or not allowed to take people to hospital. It is somehow not honest and not fair to talk about an open society, but then to have one of the deadliest external borders. Captain Chervinsky has no time for backroom diplomacy. The situation is too volatile for that. There are no other rescue vessels at this time. As far as I know, Sea Watch 3 is committed, and so are other ships. There's a lot of dying off along the Libyan coast, especially with the unrest that's raging there now. There will be some boats floating empty. The Alan Curdy had to wait for three more days before the refugees were allowed to land. The migration movement has changed the south of Europe, also politically. Since the right-wing populists in Rome took over the government, the neo-fascists have also been on the rise. One of the newest groups is called Azione Frontale. In a suburb, members distribute food to socially weak people. Mussolini's great example, ubiquitous. Azioni Frontale came into being because a few boys rebelled here and did not want to continue to watch the institutions abandoning us. Of course we also have an ideological approach, politically we are a fascist movement. That is our ideology, and we do not hide it. We are proud of it. With their action the fascists want to weaken the state. According to the motto, if politics does not help, we step in. Transparent, but effective. These are great guys. But they are fascists. I'm not interested in that, I'm not in any party. The important thing is that they do something good. The state isn't helping us, it's not even helping us get jobs. They told me there was something, so I came here. You don't say no. When I get something, I'm grateful. From whomever. After sunset, measure number two of the neo-fascist vigilante group begins. Then young men from Azione Frontale make their so-called security rounds in the neighborhood. A protection force that dreams of the day before yesterday. 
Mussolini is our point of reference, our guideline, because he is the inventor and planner of fascism and the one who implemented the ideas of fascism. But he also made the racial laws. The racial laws are documents that undoubtedly existed, we have seen them before our eyes and read them. The racial laws were an instrument to remove the Jewish problem from Italy. Words for which no words can be found. There are areas in Europe that have seen better times. Demolition houses, vacancies, unemployment. The former Ruhrpott metropolis lies on the ground. And even those who made Gelsenkirk and Great can no longer make ends meet. Helmut Maslow used to be a miner. Today he has to supplement his disability pension by collecting bottles. Jackpot, jackpot, this is jackpot. Whenever I find four pieces, that's a jackpot, one euro. I paid for the teeth on this one too. In the good times, Maslow went underground at the Ewald Colliery, digging for black gold. Today, he digs in garbage cans, 10 hours a day. He is not the only one in Gelsenkirchen. At first I only did it at night until someone saw me. And then he took me out for lunch and then I smelled fuse and then it was okay. And then I came out, and then it was good. Today you see, I have nothing to be ashamed of anymore. I can deal with anyone. Listen, I see something in there, girls. Wait a minute. I can see it from far away. You got another one in there. I don't know. Spin it. Ah, uh, here's another one. There you see, the beer can. Say, you can start with me. What do you think? I'd be happy to, if I don't get my A-levels. Those are prospects, right? But then I'd have three times this. We'll split it down the middle, right? We can do that. In the Ruhrpott, people stick together. And politically, too. The Labour Party was elected. Gelsenkirchen was social democratic country. Yes, the SPD, they were great in my time. It did a lot for mining, has done a lot for us. We got five marks mining bonus. The SPD stood up for us miners, then we got 10 marks, but tax-free. Every day when we went down, we had 10 marks in our pockets. And today? Not today, nothing. The large people's parties. In Germany, they are in a crisis of confidence. Merkel must go. That crazy woman over there on the wall. Jewish whore. She should go home. She betrayed her country. The alleged foreign infiltration has poisoned the climate in the country. Despite all the good words, we've accomplished so much. We can do this. It was mainly the others who made it, the far right, the victory of the AFD, a turning point. We're gonna hunt them down. Right-wing extremism is developing a new dynamic. Neo-Nazis are infecting the middle of bourgeois society. A republic, in rage. Poverty in old age, immigration, voter frustration. Gelsenkirchen has too much of everything. 17% was collected by the AFD in the home of bottle collector helmet. B. Can you do me a favor? Could you put a bag on the side for me? Sure. We've known each other over 20 years. Helmet is really nice, so it's no problem at all. He can leave everything with me. And he gets me food, too, when I'm hungry and have no time. He's a nice guy. How are the people in Gelsenkirchen? Some of them not so good. 18% I think we have. But I think some of us don't want to work either. I really do. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's not all of them, but some of them will. A study has declared Gelsenkirchen the poorest city in Germany. 
postmarked, in, last place. The survey at the kiosk, is similar. Since the money's gone, the buddies lack the meaning in life. Are you happy? Me? No. Then, I wouldn't be sitting here. Lost my family, and everything. Yeah, if I had an intact family with my kids, and everything, I wouldn't be sitting here. Then I would sit at home on the couch, holding my children, and not have to drive away my boredom here now. Look, you already got a gang there. This is Germany, this is Germany. And I should be proud of it? Germany is too hospitable for foreigners. They can get away with a lot here. Where we get a fine for, they get a warning. And you are fucked. That's how it is, believe me. Yes, there it is again, the thing with the immigrants. Since the EU expansion, to the east thousands of them have come and have not always behaved well. We live right over here. Things fly out the window, people throw up out the window, and all sorts of things. Yeah, we're getting pelted too. We have exactly our property behind here and they throw things down there. Now the new ones also from this house here. But I'm moving out here too. I've had enough. Thousands of rats here. Over 7,000 Romanians and Bulgarians live here. Half of them work, the other half receive social benefits. This is incomprehensible, even for their own countrymen. They are so bad people in Romania. They, they steal too much. Yeah. Romania should not be in Europe. Union Europe. Yeah. Romania should not be. Even if I'm a Romanian person, I tell that and that's the truth. Gelsenkirk and lies on the dark side of Europe. The citizens feel abandoned by politics. A feeling that Claudia Kreder also feels when she hides away in her apartment because the district where she grew up is no longer the same. Horst has changed so much. I could go out early in the evening. My daughter is grown up now, but I didn't send her out alone since she was 16. You are simply afraid. No, Horst isn't what it was. What's going on here instead? She watched from the balcony last summer. A dispute between two Romanian extended families escalates directly in front of her house. People are attacking each other in the open street. Chairs, truncheons, and pavement slabs serve as weapons. Excesses of violence on a Sunday afternoon. There was so much potential for violence. It wouldn't have mattered if it was a car, a child, a family. They wouldn't have had any consideration for it. With bricks, baseball bats, anything they could grab. Since then, Horst has been something of a no-go area for them. A dangerous place. I also have to say, I got my small arms permit last year. Just to protect myself too. But I also know, especially here in the whole settlement, many, many people have applied for a firearms license. The one down there, and the one up there. The gap is widening in Europe. In Marseille, the former capital of culture, 25% of the people now live below the poverty line, and over 60% did not vote in the last European elections. Under such circumstances, election campaigns are a real struggle, the supporters of Emmanuel Macron trying not to let themselves be beaten down despite this. It's a little frustrating. I'm only 20 and it's about the future of my generation. But I see a lot of people here who have given up. Two generations meet in the pedestrian zone. Neither seems to understand the other. So you're voting May 26th? Yeah. For Macron? Oh, certainly not. Certainly not. Why? Sarkozy brought France to its knees. Francois Hollande brought it down, and Macron strangled us. 
Macron, il nous a égorgé. Maybe I vote, maybe I don't. But you must vote, sir. She wants you to vote. Because I'm really scared. Don't be afraid. But I am afraid. I'm afraid of populism, of nationalism. You can see it's growing stronger all over Europe. Macron has set out to reform his country and take a leading role in Europe. A paragon of the great cause. The Europe we know is too weak, too slow and too inefficient. But this goes too far for his people. Rising fuel prices are making the barrel overflow. The yellow vest protests claim 11 lives and over 3,000 are injured. The country is raging. We're about to wake up. Be afraid. The profiteers are coming from the far right. Marine Le Pen could win over 20% in the EU elections. Our project is a revolution. Outside of big politics, others are in charge. In the ghettos of Marseille, the drug gangs rule the everyday life of the people. Filming is only possible when accompanied by a person of respect, and only if the local drug boss gives the okay. In scene jargon, he's called the site manager. Wait, put the camera down. Salam, how's it going brother? He's not filming you. I warned the foreman. It's okay, it's okay. They're not filming the construction site, brother. By building site is meant the place where the drugs are stored. Safian, our escort, knows how to talk to the guys. He used to be one of them himself. In Marseille, they call them the lost youth. Look at this. Not bad, huh? Well, as far as looks go, we can't complain. The view is beautiful, but how is life? Life is hard. It's especially hard for moms and dads. Many can't make ends meet, jump off balconies, commit suicide because they can't pay the rent. What's our problem? Well, if we had work, nobody around here would be dealing. Here you can get anything, anything you want. Shit, cocaine, ecstasy, MDMA, heroin, anything you want. Recently, they had a visit from the state authorities. An unpleasant encounter for both sides. This is where it happened. I was about to go home when I saw three plainclothes policemen coming off the bridge. They arrived and grabbed one right away. There. We were wondering, what's going on? Then we got into it, and it escalated from there. Hey, let him go. Let him go. Two officers are seen here. Even armed, they have little chance against the youngsters. Laws have no value here. In the ghetto, only the law of the strongest applies. If they come here, they'll have to come with two or three cars to take us on. If someone enters your home, you would not welcome them with open arms either. In the past year alone, over 20 people died in Marseilles from gang violence. Wild West on the Côte d'Azur, clearly recorded on a surveillance camera. Only the question of guilt is unclear. France is in crisis, we can feel it. The yellow vests and all that shows that our country is in turmoil. The honest workers are in crisis. And you think we'll go down with them? The concrete castles were built in the 60s, when after the Algerian war one million people sought refuge with their former colonial masters. Instead of integrating them, they were pushed to the edge of the city. A migration policy that is doomed to failure, then and now. In some districts, the unemployment rate is 50%. The drugs business, often the only source of income, even for the youngest in society. Where are you going today? We're going out to dinner. Food. And then? Then we'll come back. They'll be back. And then? What will they do here? You can see what they have here. It's guys like him, with masks, selling drugs, and people who shoot. When it comes to the next generation, care now predominates. 
I caught the kid with a knife the other day. Isn't that crazy? A 12-year-old kid with a knife. That's crazy. If they have a knife at 12, they have a gun at 18. I don't believe it. They're so little. Of the six poorest districts in France, four are in Marseille. The city, a stronghold of the disadvantaged. But there are also ways out of the downward spiral. In the Muay Thai Boxing Club, Coach Karim tries to free the youth from the grip of drug gangs. With his current sparring partner, he has already succeeded quite well. I wanted to shoot people several times, but he said no. I wanted revenge, and he said no, be patient. Thanks to Karim, I waited and now everything is fine. In the meantime Christian even leads local politicians, like George Panagio to through his neighborhood. A conservative with Greek and a boxer with Algerian roots. When we talk about politicians, we talk about liars and false prophets. Those are the experiences we have had with politics. I'm sorry. If it had done its job, opened up prospects for us and made the most of our potential, we wouldn't be here now and the neighborhood wouldn't be so run down. But even if politics were the cause of all evil, it seems clear who is responsible for the consequences. For the poor condition of the houses has another reason. A very practical one at least from the point of view of the dealers. Unfortunately, it is also the case that they break the light bulbs in the houses, because when they're up to no good, they don't want to be seen. So it's not only because there is no renovation here, but also because of such things. The building complex is built like a labyrinth, with room for over 4,000 people. Even if not all of them earn their money with drugs, they still control the neighborhood rules that every child respects. I know almost all of them. For example, back there, they're watching us. I can go and ask if we can walk by without filming them, of course. If there is a place where they sell drugs, you stop filming immediately. The law of the street applies to everyone, even the guest from politics. Don't film to the left. Yeah, don't film there. We're just respecting the dealer's rules, right? Absolutely. This is absurd. Yeah, it's unusual. But this is how we maintain social peace. That's not the solution. I agree with you. But we're about to change that. Social peace is also important outside the ghettos. All France is struggling for justice these days. In this house, in Marseilles, the last preparations for a class struggle are being made. The yellow vests against the elite. Two of the women work in nursing professions, one in a daycare center, one is unemployed. All of them have too little money. The childcare, filling the fridge, the bills. Sometimes I wonder if I'd rather not pay for school meals so I can shop. Then I'll have to make up for it next month. It is difficult to get up every morning, go to work and then realize that you are only doing it to pay bills. It is the French middle class that is driven into the streets by its rage and that does not want to give up despite massive riots. Today I am ready for anything, I go out into the streets knowing that I can lose my freedom, my eye or my hand. But I do it anyway, because I have two children. Because I don't want to leave this France to my children. A dissatisfaction that on this day is cross-generational. She is 80 years old and has been on the streets every Saturday since the beginning. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, God will punish you. God will punish you. Because you do not like your people. Macron, once praised as a savior, now condemned as a ruthless reformer. For eight months police and demonstrators have struggled to gain the upper hand. After the first arrests, the mood in Marseille also becomes more uncomfortable.
They've arrested two people and that's why we're standing here in front of the commissariat to say stop. But on that day, there is no one to stop. Instead, the situation escalates. An exchange of blows between citizens and uniform wearers. Both more than helpless. Get back. Get back. Faustine struggles with tears. This damn country makes me weep. They suddenly sprayed us with tear gas. Damn my eyes. Wait, wait. She realizes that she is needed as a nurse. A little boy got tear gas. Open your eyes. Protect him. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. There are children. You just hit a kid. Just make a difference. It's a kid. Look, it's a child. Be human, you have a heart. Macron is now making concessions to the yellow vests. It remains to be seen whether that is enough to put out the fire. It is the industrial workers who have made Europe strong in the world. But in Bradford, England, the pride of the working class is a thing of the past. The textile industry has migrated to Asia. What remains are the victims of globalization. Every Monday, they meet in this Christian institution. Here, they get free food and clothing. Today, there are over a hundred people, failed by life and circumstances, all with their own story. They no longer believe in politics. But it has been forgotten. It feels like some people, politicians have just pushed it away. They don't want to deal with it. They'd rather just leave it as it is. But they can't do that. They need to get involved again and get everybody back to normal, get everybody talking to people. Because if you don't talk to people, it's not just going to get all trapped and not good, not good. The aid organization does not receive a penny from the government. In England, the state has to save ironically after having saved the banks with billions during the financial crisis. The poorest of the poor are now being looked after by Janet Bannister. She's in charge of the project. But please don't forget, we love you, we care for you, and you are special. Okay. A ruined social system, an aloof political caste in London, and the Brexit disaster, all bad for the citizens. There's so many people in Brussels who sat hundreds of them round tables and talking. What are they doing for the cities? They want to motivate and come and see what's happening in the cities actually see what's happening ground roots. It's no good talking in London, in Brussels, in France, in Paris, when they don't know what the people feel. The British Kingdom has lost its grip. An elite stuck between the crown and upper class thinking, forcing the people to make a fateful choice. Brexit, yes or no? That was the question. British people have spoken and the answer is, we're out. A victory for the hardliners in the country. Independence Day! And she has to suffer for it. Negotiate what is not negotiable. Brexit means Brexit. I'm very clear Brexit does mean Brexit. And the United Kingdom is leaving the European Union on the 29th of March 2019. They didn't make it. The chaos in the House of Commons was too great for that. A government on the ground. Miroslav is just one of hundreds of homeless people in Bradford. The Slovak, like two million other Eastern Europeans, came to work on the island. But after an accident, he lost his job. For him, the beginning of the social decline. Because I'm lose daughter, I'm lose my ex girlfriend. So I'm left house, everything. I'm lose. So I'm 14. 
what the US won for, I'm homeless. So I'm, I'm not in. I'm looking always round, round, food, food, eating. Many British believe their country has taken in too many migrant workers. This is one of the reasons why they voted for the Brexit. Even Miroslav's friends are divided. They're coming from another country, come straight in, two weeks, they've given them an hour, they've given them everything, and they've got televisions and everybody saying, we can't get nothing. Oh, no. No, oh, really makes me angry sometimes. Miroslav is a migrant, so is he a problem or is he not a problem? Well, he is a problem, but, you know, he's, he's classed as my friend. You know, I've, I've always treated him as a friend. I've never said nothing wrong. But like I said, I was born here, yeah, you come from abroad and you've got more than me. And I was born here. The unemployment rate in Bradford is 4%. Sounds low. At the same time, 30% of all households have financial problems despite working. That sounds like a lot. Miroslav and his buddy are even worse off. All what I've got now, I've had donated from to charity. From, from charity, from church. From church, life city, yeah. Nobody gives me money for this pay. We can stop. Do you feel ashamed that you that you live on donations? Yes. But what can we do? We don't have clothes on his back. We can't walk around naked. We have to have something on. The British underclass is not so far from the British middle class. In Guysley, a suburb of Bradford, lives Rhiannon. The 30-year-old is a single mother and can't find a new job. After all, her ex-husband pays alimony. Still, it's not enough back and forth. Pasta is generally pretty cheap, so I, I tend to eat a lot of pasta. Um, but it tends to be sort of ready meals and stuff that are on, you know, like on offers. Um, so I don't have the healthiest diet that I'd like to have. No car, no movies, no extras. A life on the cheap. Every month. That all comes to 896.64 a month. Outgoing, so I've got my gas, electric and water. Food, um, which is around 240 a month. Three different loans on there. After that, um, I'm apparently left with £6.31. That's about seven euros and 20. So I've seen on the news that MPs are getting pay rises and they're having these holidays and things like that. Yet the NHS is basically falling to pieces and the people who are actually, you know, out there saving lives um, and making a difference, they're really, really struggling to get by. I just think money's just spent irresponsibly in this country. The working class without work is furious. Rhiannon would also like to earn her own money again. But the extra care for daughter Padme is too expensive. The imminent Brexit makes her fear even greater. I think it's going to go downhill so fast. <laughs> but if Food. we're left with a government such as ours, to support literally on, a, on, a, on our own as an island. Yeah. Mm. It will be fight for the fittest, <clears throat> honestly. The food will go up, rent will go up, because there's no one saying that's wrong. Doomsday scenarios that arise when the people don't know what's in store for them. When prejudice and misinformation have really fueled the drama. In the case of Brexit, the alleged parallel societies also played a decisive role. For the love of money, it's a criminal thing. Sarcastic lasses, a cynical thing. Copies of lasses, a minimal thing. Faisal and Ali Israel come from Pakistan have Asian roots, as do 30% of all Bradford residents. For both of them their hobby was their salvation. Music has helped me stay off the streets because you can't, you can't stay in the streets if you have to stay at home and write lyrics. It's uh, shown me a way of how to be confident, self-confident with myself. I used to have a really bad stutter when I was younger. Um, listening to rap music and learning how to write and rap music, it helped me get over that. His life was in control. The resentment of his fellow citizens is not. Sometimes in Bradford, he feels like a second-class citizen. We were invited to come here 
as you know to come here and work here in the mills that's why a lot of people settled in Bradford and, and in West Yorkshire to come and work within the mills when we were invited to come here and like I don't know I, I think for people to feel as though like we're trying to take over the country is just total nonsense. Miroslav, the Slovakian homeless man, will also feel the consequences of the Brexit. As an EU citizen, he would probably have to leave the country. His daughter and his British ex-girlfriend will be allowed to stay. If she move from Bradford to Sussex, she get new flat, good job. My daughter have good school, yeah. So everybody they happy. All except Miroslav. All he has left is a few photos of his intact family and the good life with his apartment and job. Now he's finished. I'm kill myself here, kill myself, because my daughter born here. I love England. You, you're not afraid of being kicked out? Oh, no. Very hard when you send me, send me home. The Slovaks have been in the EU for 15 years. The British are the first to want to leave. Also in other states, sealing off is the core issue of the powerful. On Hungary's southern border, it looks like the Cold War. A double fence to keep out migrants. Those who get through nevertheless end up in a transit zone, in sealed off containers. Visitors are not wanted here. Don't film me, it violates my privacy rights. Electric fences, thermal imaging cameras, floodlights, Hungary deters. The farmers, whose farm is only a few meters from the fence, are actually quite happy about the new obstacle for refugees. We always got a fright when they knocked on our windows at night. Now nobody comes around here anymore. You don't see anyone either. Europe could not look so fast. Hungary had already completed its bulwark. You have to go to the railway. We are from Syria. The refugees as an initial spark for right-wing patriots. Spurred on by a leader who, united with other hardliners, dreams of a migrant-free Europe. Salvini demands a new Europe. Right. We have to turn over a new leaf. Orban's control center, a thousand three hundred kilometers to the right of Brussels. On the first of May, several thousand people in Budapest celebrate the performance of a right-wing rock band. Among the visitors, everything is there convinced nationalists with child and cone, strapping neo-Nazis with clear poses and declarations of war. The family, national unity, and the defense of the Occident are conjured up. The EU is rejected. I hope that there is a bit of patriotism in every country, as there is in ours. I am a Christian, I'm a Hungarian Christian. And what is going on in the EU is about, is against Christians. And I'm so unhappy about this. Hungary is over a thousand years old. We have always defended Europe against the Muslims. And we still do it today. The first May festival was organized by Laszlo Toroszkaj, an extreme right-wing mayor from the south of the country. Toroszkaj is the leader of a movement called My Home, so to speak, a vigilante group with a mayor. We want to be an example for other mayors and politicians. We don't want them to hide behind their desks or their TV cameras. We want them to take to the streets. We want them to defend people where crime is rampant. His main enemy, you can guess it already, are migrants, especially Roma. Are you Carol Shinko? Do you know you're trespassing? Are you also aware that we've given you 48 hours to vacate these two houses? Stealing wood and slashing the neighbor's tires. Why are you doing this? 
This video, which he has published, shows what it looks like when Toroskai cracks down hard. A mayor, as bulldozer. One group in particular benefits from Morbin's policy in Hungary. Hungarians. The local population is supported with lucrative family programs. The son of truffle farmer Ulrich would receive around 30,000 euros for his third child. This is a good option for families who are planning to have a child or especially for those who already have two or three children. The families then receive money from the state which they do not have to pay back. And if they want to build or renovate a house, there are also cheap loans on top of that. Promises that go down well with the family. Hungary, first. Europe can see where it's at. If we want to grow as a people and invest money for this, then this is what we do. We shouldn't waste the money and give it to others who stick the knife in our backs afterwards. That would not be good. When you hear him speak, it is hard to believe that it was the European Union that made the truffle farmer a wealthy man. His precious tubers grow under specially cultivated oaks, supported by a reforestation program of the EU. We have customers in Japan and North America. We deliver to Western Europe and Southern Europe. The demand is very high. Big is also the key word for the next station. An oversized football stadium has been built in the village of Felksut. In contrast, the birthplace of Orban, conveniently located right next door, looks like a dwarf house to tourists. The house where he was born is pretty and fits into the village. It's a bit big. Football isn't really my thing, so you could have built a nice castle. Mr. Orban seems to be very fond of soccer. Yeah, obviously. So why doesn't he share with Mrs. Merkel? Noemi Kosas is a journalist and often writes about the waste of tax money. Orban has set new standards in this area. What European prime minister can say of himself that he has a stadium directly opposite his house? It has room for 3,500 spectators, but here in the countryside there are usually only about 500 people. And not only that, Orban's village has had its own narrow-gauge railway for a few years now, financed among other things with money from EU structural aid funds. The light railway was really very expensive. It cost several billion forins, several million euros. And if you look at the map, you can see that we are in the middle of nowhere. This project was absolutely pointless. There were indeed brief investigations into corruption in Brussels, but that train has left the station. In Hungary, Europe's paths part. Some go to the past, others to the future.